Here's a short tip for success from Talent Solutions. Today's topic, screen sharing tips and tricks. This is part four of our Zoom Basics video series. If you aren't familiar with screen sharing, check our previous video to learn the basics. The link to that video will be in the description box below. Let's start by going into a little bit more detail with the topics we discussed in our previous video. What are some ways you could use screen sharing to improve your business? One of the most common ways to utilize Zoom's screen share feature is to share a presentation. Once you are sharing your screen, you can control your presentation just as you would ordinarily using your computer. If you find yourself wanting to indicate something on your presentation, you can highlight your cursor by using the Spotlight tool. The Spotlight tool is located in the top bar, and it illuminates your cursor so that it is easier for your attendees to see where you move your mouse and to draw their attention to specific things. When you are in a Zoom meeting with your video on and you decide to screen share, the video of yourself as well as the other participants is minimized to a little floating window, just like the chat window I talked about previously. This allows you to interact with your attendees and get some nonverbal feedback. Some services, like Prezi, allow users to integrate their presentation directly into Zoom for a more in-person feel. Take some time to do a bit of research into ways to integrate video chat with your presentation. It may provide the more personal element you're looking for. You can also integrate any collaborative tools you might already use for your business during your Zoom meetings. For example, Trello is a great online tool to use for planning and organizing projects. I can screen share my Trello board so my attendees can watch in real time as I update the board based on the discussion we are having. Be sure to brainstorm ways to incorporate the tools you already use with Zoom's screen sharing capabilities. You might be surprised at how easy it is to combine programs. Another topic that was mentioned in our last video was the annotate feature. As I stated previously, annotate can be used as a great icebreaker, but it can also be a tool for voting or expressing opinion. Let's say I am scheduling a Zoom meeting for next Tuesday. On the slide, I have written three possible times. My attendees can use the annotate feature to put a check mark beside the days that work for them. A cool thing about the annotate feature is that it is anonymous. Of course, that anonymity can be changed if you fiddle around with your settings. But if you decide to keep annotations anonymous, it can be used for commenting without fear of being identified. Annotate doesn't just have to be used collaboratively, though. You can annotate on your own slides when you are sharing a presentation to draw extra attention to something or add a note as a way to engage your attendees. Some users even enjoy using Zoom as a way to train their new hires. Not sure what I'm talking about? Let's take a closer look. Right now, I'm on a Zoom call with my new coworker, Alice. Alice wants to know how to fill out some paperwork. Firstly, I'll ask Alice to share her screen. Then I'll start annotating. First, I'm going to circle the file she needs to open on her desktop. Once she has clicked on that, I'll clear my annotations by clicking the Clear button up here. Now that Alice has the file open, I can look at the paper with her and answer her questions. I can help her fill out the paperwork by stamping arrows or underlining things that are important. Of course, you can adapt this method of teaching or training in many other ways as well. And last but not least, I'm going to share two last screen sharing tricks that you might find quite helpful. The first of which is how to switch screens seamlessly. Let's say you are in the middle of sharing a PowerPoint presentation when you get an urgent email you want to share with your team. Of course, you could click stop sharing and then share the screen with your email, but that often looks choppy and can make your attendees a little nauseous with all of the rapid changes. Instead, you can seamlessly switch to a new screen while still screen sharing by clicking the new share button in the top bar. Using the new share feature when wanting to share a new screen gives your meeting a more professional look, in addition to showing that you are technologically savvy. The last screen sharing tip I'm going to share with you today is pausing your screen share. Pausing freezes the screen on whatever you are showing when you hit the pause button for your attendees. However, it does not freeze your screen. This is kind of complicated, so let me give an example. Right now, I'm sharing a presentation with my attendees about a fundraising event. I'm currently on slide one. I know I have written the date of the fundraiser on the next slide, but I can't remember if I included the time. I'm going to pause my screen share right here while I'm on slide one. This means that while I'm changing things on my end, all my attendees can see is slide one. Clever, right? Okay, I have fixed my error. Now I will set my presentation back to slide one and then click resume share, and no one is the wiser. As with everything mentioned in this video, the pause feature has many uses, so I'm sure you'll be able to think of a few situations where it could come in handy.
With these screen sharing tips in mind, brainstorm with your colleagues or reach out to us here at Talent Solutions if you'd like some inspiration with ways to utilize all that Zoom has to offer. We hope you enjoyed this short tutorial. If you have any questions about the content of this video or other business solutions, connect with us today at talentsolutions at esd.wa.gov. And remember, the success of your business is our business.